Hello and welcome to the next episode of Eat Move Win and the Musings of a Bullshit Queenager. And I am with the amazing Rennie Randall, who is known as, wait for this because you never have you will never have heard of anyone with this combination of names, the kitchen witch. How cool is that? That is what she's name as, and I absolutely love it. So welcome to the podcast, Renee. It's lovely to have you here. Thank you so, so much for having me. The first question has got to be, what the hell's a kitchen witch? Love that question. <laughs> um, yeah, if you're not in the sort of witchcraft field arena, uh, um, not. <laughs> you, you, it's very strong possibility that you will have never heard of a kitchen witch. So a kitchen witch is somebody who focuses their magic in the home. So quite often, and for me, that's around food and working with food to um, tie into the spiritual energy, to connect to nature, um, and to alter my mood and my vibration with what I'm eating. But it can also be... if for people who don't like to cook, like maybe just in making a cup of tea or how you clean your house or things like that. So kitchen witches focus their magic, which is just a way of saying, setting an intention to change your vibration, AKA the way you feel uh, and using the energy around you in all things to influence that. And we do that in the kitchen. Oh my God, I love that. That is like, you've got a really good way of explaining something that I would call woo-woo and we're going to talk about that (laughs) that into like normal real life situations which Mm -hmm. I think is really fascinating so how long have you been exploring this side this witch side of you Mm -hmm. I really got into it about three years ago Mm -hmm. and basically from the moment I discovered that witchcraft was a thing that real people did I was all in. I was like, this is it. This is what I have been looking for my whole life. It all made perfect sense to me. And I was like, I want to know everything. I want to be in this all the time. And since then, it's just become a bigger and bigger part of my life. Oh, wow. How did you do that? Um, A lot of Googling. (laughs) Um, I have done some, um, some online courses. I read a lot of books, listened to a lot of podcasts. But the great thing about witchcraft is that it's unique to every person there are no rules there's no dogma it's not like people often confuse wicca and witchcraft wicca is a religion but you can be a witch without being wiccan and you just make it up as you go along essentially whatever you believe is what you're going to get so you set your own ethics you set your own standards which was perfect for me because I don't like to listen to anyone else (laughs) (laughs) That's brilliant. So going back to what you said about shifting the vibration, shifting the energy. Mm -hmm. This is like I um in the online business space, there's a lot of talk about manifestation. There's a lot Mm -hmm. of talk about how you must learn this specific way and you can get five million dollars or you can, you know, suddenly get a check through the post and all of these things. And one of the parts about this manifestation thing is about changing the vibration. Uh Tell me, what does what does that actually mean? Right. So changing your vibration in its simplest form is just about making yourself feel better. Right. The sort of like quantum mechanics of it all is that everything vibrates. Everything in the universe is made up of atoms and particles that are all constantly spinning around each other, right? We can now see that through a microscope. I've never seen it. I've seen pictures of it in science books, but so there's this very esoteric idea of these vibrating particles in all things. And People who believe in the law of attraction and manifestation and things like that believe that you have to align your vibration to your desire. And that's how you magnetically attract all of these things that you want. Look, how you do this in real life is you make yourself feel better because when you are spending more time in joy and happiness, you're going to experience more joy and happiness. It's like putting on glasses. I talk a lot about the lens of witchcraft, the way that you see the world. So if you're putting on your, waking up and putting on your negative glasses every morning, 
right? You're setting yourself in that vibration. Everything that you look at, you're going to see through this lens of negativity. I'm unlucky. Nothing ever goes my way. Everybody else has it better than me. Um, but if you wake up in the morning and you put on your positive vibration glasses, you're going to see all of those little things that you have to be grateful for, right? You get into your shower in the morning, you have running clean, hot water. That's a miracle, right? You have fingers and toes. If you're lucky enough to have those things, that's a miracle. And you, when you start to see everything for the gift that it is, you just see more gifts. And then a lot of times, you know, what those people who tell you that you can think a certain thing or say a certain mantra or do a certain meditation and you get a million dollars, you know, that may or may not happen. That probably happens once, you know, in uh, out of a billion people, but your whole life experience is improved because you're looking for, you're expecting things to be good. Yeah. It's, um, I think it's really quite funny because we are in total, you would never say that we've got a lot in common, I would imagine, at very face value. But one of the things that we work on with our clients is talking about, you know, this positive, who do you want to be? How do you want mm-hmm. to feel? What are you grateful for? To try and shift a mindset away from scarcity or negativity to this future pacing, to this, you know, there is so many possibilities mm-hmm. and so much opportunity. Yeah. I just think that's really funny how, you know, nutritionist, health, exercise, with a witch, we've got mm-hmm. that connection. Yeah, that- we see on, on the podcast that I host, we say all the time, you know, witchcraft, it's just CBT with crystals and candles. <laughs> it's just, again, it's putting on that lens of witchcraft and what you do. I believe that mindset is magic. It is changing your vibration. So when you're doing things to intentionally have a more positive mindset, you might call that, you know, just general mindset work, embodiment work, whatever. Or if you want to, you can call it magic and witchcraft. I love it. That is really cool, isn't it? Yeah. And I like, I call it magic because that's what makes me feel good. That's what makes me want to do it. Doesn't matter what you call it. As long as you're empowering yourself, call it whatever you want. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Well, I know there's this, there is this kind of feeling that I get, certainly, and whether it's probably just my perception, of it's when we see all these people. It's like, it's my way or the highway. There is only one way. And it can't be that way. Mm-mm. It just can't can't work like that so tell me about the kitchen aspect more then so I have had the joy of tasting one of Renee's cakes <laughs> and they are very tasty yep did it so raise how, your vibration it certainly did yeah. <laughs> then, we, then we got into a really deep conversation <laughs> about placebo effect but anyway tell me about the kitchen thing so how did that all come about have you always been in this cooking sphere or how did that come about Yeah, I've loved to cook for quite a long time. I was maybe in my mid-20s when I started getting into cooking. I actually learned everything I know from watching the Food Network. So (laughs) yeah, growing up, I didn't cook at all. And then at some point in my mid-20s, I became obsessed with watching like actual cooking tutorial shows. I think it took me away from all of the like the noise and the negativity of news and even like, you know, regular everyday TV, like dramas that are quite gritty and depressing and stuff like that. Like food is always happy. Mm -hmm. And I love the idea of being able to look at a piece of paper and follow some instructions and then turn it into this delicious thing that I could eat. And then when I discovered witchcraft, I was like, that is magic AF. (laughs) taking all of these disparate things Mm -hmm. it's alchemy right Mm -hmm. mixing them together in just the right way with just the right timing just the right amount of heat using all of the elements of nature and when you come out on the other side you have something that is nourishing delicious pleasurable fills you with joy Um, another thing I love about kitchen witchcraft is that it each ingredient has its own metaphysical properties its own energy so you can select different foods for different moods that you want to create oh tell me more 
Yeah. So like when you're looking at food from a nutrition perspective, you know, they have different different properties, different chemical properties, different biological properties that do things in your body. And if you want to get into the spiritual side, you can also look at the metaphysical properties of your food. So for example, things like citrus fruits have a really cleansing vibe to them. Um, If you've looked into aromatherapy at all, like the scent of oranges, when you're in a room with somebody who's peeling an orange, how do you feel as soon as you smell that orange? Feel it, left, doesn't it? Yeah, it instantly makes you feel happier. Mm-hmm. So you can call in those little things. You know, salt is said to have protective properties. Every time you sprinkle salt into your dish, you can just ask to be protected from any negative energy. You know, there's lots of things that bring abundance, like um, a lot of herbs, like mint is really great for calling in more money. Um, so you can use every ingredient can bring something different. If you like spicy food, can add a little bit of fire energy, um, lots of aphrodisiac foods as well. If you want to, you know, cast a little love spell on date night. That's so amazing. Every, I love yeah. it. Everybody, everybody's going to be way into the <laughs> home garden, rubbing themselves with mint. Like, oh, mm-hmm. I need to attract, I need to attract, I need to attract. But when you think about like the way that mint grows, how resilient it is, how quickly it spreads, like, that's what you want your money to do, right? You want it to last. You want it to always be there. You want it to always come back. So there is some logic behind these metaphysical, like almost myths that we've created around herbs. That's fascinating. <laughs> well, see the whole, see you're saying about salt. Mm-hmm. Is that why people, th- when they spill salt, mm-hmm. that they put, throw it over their shoulder? Yep, yep. If you've ever thrown salt over your shoulder, you're doing a magic spell. Oh, I totally have. Yeah. Oh, <laughs> There's so many ways that people, we all engage in magical thinking and it's just such an ingrained part of our culture that we don't even consider it. Uh, birthday candles. Mm-hmm. That's a spell. If you've ever, um, you know, if you've ever kissed a wound on a child, they fall down and you scrape their knee and you kiss it to make it better. That's magic. Who knew? We're mm-hmm. all doing. We're all doing it. We're all doing it. Absolutely. Way. Um. So when we were chatting, we were discussing before we went live about when this instance was. We can't remember if it was the cake time or the non-cake time. <laughs> um. But we were talking about spiritual things and how, and I would normally call them woo-woo, mm-hmm. and I think probably most people would call them woo-woo. You don't love the term woo-woo, do you? I don't care for it myself. And it's a term that I have used as well because, you know, it has a meaning now. Everybody kind of knows what you mean. But to me, it feels sort of infantilizing. It's very dismissive. Mm. And it's it's easy for people to not take it seriously when you you can just say, oh, that's so woo-woo. She's so woo-woo. And it doesn't account for the, like, hundreds of years of you know our ancestors passing down this magical knowledge this like deeply held belief for a lot of people that your beliefs really do influence your reality your spiritual connection really does influence your physical body and your physical experience like it you wouldn't ever if you use that kind of term about an established religion people would get really upset. Yeah, they really would. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I know, I get it. And it is, I, I, I do completely hear that because when like people are so dismissive, they're like, oh, well, I only like things that have been proven in science. and da, 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 da. But you would argue that actually a lot of the things mm-hmm. you would talk about have been proven in Absolutely. science. Absolutely. Um, and I think, I think you're right, it does kind of, put that slant of it well you can just dismiss it Mm -hmm. yeah and there's no chemistry without alchemy there's no astronomy without astrology we wouldn't be putting people on the moon today if people hadn't been watching the patterns of the stars hundreds of years ago and trying to understand what it meant Mm -hmm. it's all connected it's all connected it is it's absolutely insane when you think (laughs) when you start digging into it so when you first started going down this route of witchcraft magic 
did you just find it was like you would look at one thing and then that would open up a whole new world of like oh my god I need to go and deep dive into that mm-hmm. oh yeah absolutely um one of my favorite podcasters Pam Grossman she always uses the phrase following the trail of cosmic breadcrumbs <laughs> And so you do, you just, you hear about one thing and then you want to learn everything about it. And while you're studying that, you hear about something else. So when I first started learning about witchcraft, I basically was like, I'm throwing out every calendar and concept of time I've ever heard of, because I'm going to start following the phases of the moon, working with what we call the wheel of the year, which is the way that a lot of witches sort of mark the passing of the seasons. Um, Every day of the week has a spiritual um, a spiritual meaning, a representation, you know, so you can like, I was like, calendars are stupid. (laughs) (laughs) I'm using the moon for everything now. And I still do follow and track the moon, like on a daily basis. It's a big part of my practice. Really? Mm -hmm. So tell us about, about your daily practices and what kind of things do you do that are just normal to you now that other people might be like, Oh, never heard of that. Or wouldn't know where to start. Mm -hmm. The things that show up most in my daily routine are like what I do first thing in the morning and what I do just before I go to bed. So, you know, I used to just wake up, take a shower, put on makeup, get dressed, go to work. And once I started becoming more, more spiritual, more intentional about the way that I wanted to, the energy that I wanted to bring out into the world, Mm -hmm. um, I developed this sort of magical morning routine. Some people will probably heard of the miracle morning. Yeah. I, that there. I do not take two hours every morning. I, because I'm a witch and I do things exactly how I want. I have made basically a 15 minute morning routine that involves a short meditation, a short vis- visualization, writing an affirmation because every word is a spell of the words that you speak influence your mind and influence your body. Uh, and I love affirmations. So I start my day with one of those. I also read a couple of different apps for my horoscope every morning. So one is based on the moon and one is more general astrology. And every day I pull a tarot or oracle card um, to help me give sort of a focus for the day. And then when it comes back around to the evening, I have um, what I call my lunar journal. So that's where I track what phase of the moon I'm in. I kind of keep notes on what card I pulled that morning, if I did any spells, how they came out, um, and just some reflections that are sort of based around the phases of the moon and tracking the different sort of energies that I've worked with during that day. That is hugely different from washing your face, brushing your teeth and going to lie down. Mm -hmm. (laughs) And obviously I still do all of those things. (laughs) (laughs) <laughs> right. I'm not just like rolling out as a disgusting monster, but I have added in these spiritual elements that not only, so not only am I starting my day with physical cleaning, but also energetic cleansing. I love it. Well, um, compared to where you were before you started mm-hmm. your journey through witchcraft, How would you describe how you feel now versus then? I can 100% say that I am less depressed, less anxious, much more positive person. I've worked a lot on my money mindset through learning about witchcraft, manifestation, uh, mindset magic, and all that stuff. I used to be just, I used to have horrible guilt around spending any money on myself. And it caused me a lot of anxiety. Um, And, you know, not to say that I'm out like just throwing money around, but I can do nice things for myself and not feel like a monster for it. Mm -hmm. That's a huge change. There was definitely a version of me who was like the queen of self-loathing. Oh, really? I would just say bad stuff about myself all the time. Before I discovered witchcraft, I can honestly say that deep down, I didn't believe that I deserved to be happy. And that was for sure the biggest change for me. It was realizing that I didn't have to just sit back and wait for things to happen. I didn't have to just accept whatever came to me in life. I had the power to create my own reality and I could choose how I wanted to feel. I could choose who I wanted to be. And then I could get my ass up (laughs) 
and <laughs> take action and do the things that I needed to do in order to feel that way all the time. And I don't have a perfect life now. And I haven't had millions of pounds come just like flying to me out of nowhere. Um, but I feel happier. That's incredible. I love it. You just, it's like, see, when you're talking there, so people listening, you won't be able to see um, <laughs> any of it. You should just see. It was almost, I could see your energy shift there, like <laughs> talking about this new, this new version of you versus previous version. It's really lovely to see. Um, and it is so like, I've done a lot of money mindset work as well over the past couple of years. And you know, it's just so fascinating. Like, I think I've, I might have told this story before where I had been doing all this work on money manifestation. And there was one day I was in this Facebook group and everybody was like, oh, yeah, well, somebody just came to my door and asked to buy my truck. There was a lot of US girls in there. Somebody just came and asked to buy my truck and somebody else had got an inheritance through. And then one day I opened a letter to myself and it was a check. And I was like, it's really hard. It's really hard. And that's not worth it. And it was a check for 20 pence. And I was like, oh, <laughs> I'm not asking for enough from the universe. But <laughs> see that feeling of excitement that you got, like the more you can be in that feeling of excitement, you know, like I said, I, I'm not going to promise you that money is just going to show up on your doorstep, but you're going to feel like you have more and how you feel and what you believe is the basis for your experience, right? Your perception is your reality. So if you're perceiving yourself as abundant and stable and safe and secure, it doesn't matter what's in your bank account. Yeah. A little more would be nice. Of oh, course it would. Of course more, it would. More than that. Trying to and the idea better. is that once you feel safe and secure, you're creating space for more to come to you. You're letting the, the universe know that you're ready for that to come in. So do you help other people get either into this world or do you help people that are already in this world? Mm-hmm. What do you do? Yeah. So in addition to my food blog, where I share recipes, I share a little bit about metaphysical properties of some of the foods in the recipes. I also share a lot of witchcraft tips and that's all for free. Uh, I have a podcast as well, where we talk about a lot of this everyday well-being, but through the lens of witchcraft. So it's very similar to the conversation that we're having where like we're just normal people living normal lives who happen to be witches. And this is how we see the world. And we put the, you know, the terms magic and manifestation and things like that onto what everybody else is doing, but we just, it's just a slight semantic shift. So those are both free for anybody to access. Um, But then I have um, another business, Sagittarian Tarot, where I offer tarot readings. So I sit down one-on-one with people. They let me know what's happening for them. I craft specific questions to help them dig a little bit deeper into that issue. And we use the tarot cards to help them explore and discover new things about themselves, get really clear on what they want and how they can make that happen for themselves. Mm -hmm. Um, What else do I do? I have (laughs) Witchcraft Academy workshops. So those are around specific witchcraft topics. So some are online, some are in person. And I also have what's called the Moon Magic Mastermind. And this is a group of women. We get together twice a month at the new and the full moon. And it's an opportunity to focus on what you really want in life. So it can, some, one person has a business, one person is retired, people are at different stages in their life, um, but it's getting intentional about setting goals for yourself and actually monitoring them, not just saying, I wanna do this thing and then like, you know, sticking it in a metaphorical drawer and never thinking about it again. And then a year later, you didn't make progress. We get together every two weeks to say, this is how I wanna make my life better. And this is what I'm gonna do about it. Wow, you're so busy. Yeah. <laughs> I am a triple fire manifesting generator with Mars and Capricorn. So I don't sit still. <laughs> That's brilliant. I love it. Um, so what I'm going to do is in the show notes, I'll mm-hmm. make sure you can send me all the links you've got. I've got a couple of there. I've got Think It's Your Podcast and the Sagittarian Tarot um, so that people can find you. Um, because I think 
there's a lot of people in my audience that are curious. I, I was like, they're woo curious, but I'm not going to use the word <laughs> woo now. Spiritually curious. Huh? Um, because I think we are like most of the people in my audience are over 40. Most people have kind of come through all this hurdy gurdy of life and kind of got to this point and going, what now? Mm-hmm. And I was 40 when I started studying witchcraft. Oh, were you really? Yeah, a lot of people are are like teen witches and they grow up with it. I didn't get into it until I was 40 years old. Wow. That's, yeah, so you might have gone through that whole place of, you know, what is for me? Where do I Mm -hmm. want to be? How do I want to feel? What is is the right thing? So, yeah, absolutely. What a good resource you have. Listeners with Renny um, get involved and she does make super nice cake too. (laughs) As you would expect, being a kitchen witch um so yeah I'll put all the links in the show notes it's been amazing talking to you I I do I love hearing all this stuff because it's just so outside of my comfort zone um but the more you have normal and I hate the phrase normal you hate the term we were I hate the term normal Uh the more (laughs) inverted commas normal people that we have who aren't like she's not floating about in a long skirt with mirrors on and a, a veil and like got a crystal ball um she it's you know just educating mm-hmm. on what it is that you do I think is so important yep chances are you know a witch already and you just they just haven't told you about it secret witches make yourself known <laughs> we're everywhere oh god <laughs> walking down the street no I think it's um I think it is pretty cool all righty thank you for listening thank you for joining us Rene it was really interesting and I'm looking forward to talking to you more with more cake bring cake oh for sure um, thank you so much for having me at other events thank you